Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can make GOD themed coasters without using a silicon mold. So I've done a previous tutorial where I made them using a mold and that was super popular so thank you to everyone that watched that and gave it a big thumbs up. I will add a link to that so if you want to go and watch that I will definitely be popping that in the description box below and also adding a little link up here. But I had a few people go, what if I can't get access to a silicon mold that's GED shape? And they wanted me to find an alternative. So I have, and it involves this and this. So stay tuned if you want to find out how you can make your own silicon molds without a silicon mold. Okay guys, so there's a few items that you're going to need. So I am using a silicone sealant. I am also got a baking tray and I've got some grease proof, grease proof paper. And the pigments that I'm going to be using today is I have got an old Artisoo pigment called Dusty Pink, which is that color, which is such a beautiful color. Then I have got some dusty, uh, is this dusty? Oh, oh, I can't read this. But it's a pink glitter from Art Tree Creations and it's called Dusty Starts of a K. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but I'll put a link to it below. Then I have also got some Artie Sue. This is their Pearl Beige Pigment Powder, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I have got the epoxy white from Barnes. And I'm thinking I might also use my bronze pigment as well as a nice contrast to all the dusty pink colors that I've got. I've also got my liquid text paint marker, which I will be using to add a really pretty gold border to the edge. And I just bought this from Eckersley's um, and this has been pretty handy. I've used it in quite a lot of art projects. And then the resin that I'm using today is the epoxy glass from Barnes. Now, I've got my baking tray like this. The reason why I'm using a baking tray is just because um, I need a really nice flat and even surface and it also means if I need to move them, I can. And then I'm just using some grease proof paper. So um, this is a non-stick. And this just means that this is going to be the base to my coasters so that way they'll peel off because they don't actually stick so, um, my resin won't actually stick to this paper you need to make sure it's a non-stick and not just a traditional baking paper so i've just got my sealant and i'm just pumping it through and now you just need to kind of make your coaster size. So if you're unsure, you could always draw like an outline around something or use an object to kind of work out how big you want it. And the great thing about this is because it's meant to be a geode coaster, it can actually be quite uneven. It doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm just going around a few times with this, just building it up. Just like that. And now I'm gonna get my paddle pop stick and I'm gonna just add a bit of texture to it. Just so that way it's not perfect. All your agate slices and your geodes have that really nice texture. And the good thing about using this sealant is it's quite fast. So I'm not gonna be waiting too long for, before I can pull my resin in. And I think I might do just another round with it just to really build up that edge.
So with my resin, this is a one to one ratio resin. And I have just poured A into B. So one part is your hardener and one part is your resin. So with your one to one ratio resin, as long as both parts are equal, you're gonna get resin that sets really nicely. If you mix one part up unevenly, uh, measure it out, it will stop your resin from setting the way it should. So I'm just gonna give it a mix. You need to make sure you really do combine your resin properly. Um, mixing it for probably like two to three minutes is generally quite a good amount of time for this amount of resin. Now I'm just gonna pour my resin out. So I think I might still add a white, so I might leave some aside. So just pour your resin out by how much you want of each color. Don't feel like you have to do it evenly if you know you're gonna want more of one color over the other. So I've just got my glitter in one and I'm just gonna keep that just as the glitter. I'm not gonna add any pigment into that. And then I've just got my dusty pink color in here. So this is gonna be, I think, the feature color for this. Just wanna make sure you really do mix your pigments in well. You don't wanna be pouring and then suddenly have a build up of pigment just come out especially if you are working with a powder. And then I've got my Dusty Beige from Marty Sue. I also have a discount code for all the Artie Sue. So if you wait till the end, I will put up the discount code because she has some of the best pigments that I've ever used and you get a 10% discount. So I'm just pouring my glitter into the center because I feel like that would make it look very agate-y. And then just my resin on the outside. And I'm gonna try and keep it similar for all of them so that way they look like a set. And just kind of trying to add this in a ring around the glitter color. And then I'm just gonna use my paddle pop stick and just start doing a few swirls. Now I'm adding my bronze, which I feel like is such a nice color against the pinks. Try not to go too crazy on this. Okay, so now I'm just gonna be using my heat gun. This is just gonna be adding a little bit of heat just to pop any micro bubbles that might be in the resin. I don't wanna blow the pattern around too much because I do wanna keep that really pretty swell in my resin, but I obviously don't wanna have any bubbles. So I do feel like 
with this technique, there's going to be quite a bit of sanding, unlike when you use a prefab mold because it's quite rough and I've never done it without using a mold. So it's a cool experiment to give it a go and it'd be great if it works without a mold because obviously this weight is super cheap but it'd be interesting to see in 24 hours when I pull these out, how they turn out. But I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of sanding to make these look pretty. But I am liking them so far. I'm not sure if they're like looking crazily geody, but, or geode, um, but I feel like they are still gonna be super pretty when they do come out. So let's see how these look in 24 hours. I left my molds to dry for 24 hours, well, my silicon for 24 hours, and then I just pulled it off. So you won't ever be able to reuse these, but it's fine because they're so super cheap to create. I will say that there is quite a lot of sanding. I thought there would be when I was doing it, and it did take me quite a while to sand back all of these molds. So I think I would probably in the future just stick to prefabbed existing silicon molds just because the little bit of money that I did save on making my own just ended up going all my time to actually sanding these back and I did find the silicon sticked a little bit as you can see onto the mold so I just had to go around and pull all the little bits that were just still stuck in. Your molds are really rough too because obviously it's not a perfect mold that you're using. I don't know how geode inspired these are looking and sorry that I've been saying geode throughout the whole start of it. I didn't even realize that I was doing that until I started watching it back. So these were meant to be agate slice slash geode inspired. I don't feel like they're 100% that, but I do feel like they are very beautiful and I am happy with how they've turned out. And it's a cool technique to try and it was a super fun experiment to do. All I'm doing now is just sanding them back. I use two types of sandpaper. I use one that was really rough grit just to kind of get all those really sharp edges back to begin with. And then I went back in with a super fine grit sandpaper just to really smooth them out but there was so much sanding involved and I did not have the patience and I don't think I would do this technique regularly. I think if I was mass producing these or making them quite a lot, it would just be worth investing in a really nice silicon mold instead of making my own molds and then sanding them by hand. Now with my Liquitex paint marker, this one is just in gold. I'm gonna go around and do all the edges. You could do silver if you wanted to as well, or a different metallic. I feel like this really finishes off the coasters. I will say that it was a little bit harder doing it on these coasters than the last set that I made from a mold, just cause the edges were so rough and the thickness of my pen, it was hard to get them in all the crevices, but it was worth the effort cause it just makes it look like a complete coaster set and really finished. So I do love adding the metallic edging to it. Thank you to everyone that watched that tutorial. It means a lot to me to get all your support and if you did enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I'd love to post more art and DIY and home decor projects just like this. And please uh, let me know in the comment box below what you thought of this tutorial. Is this something that you would make at home? And what colors would you use? Thank you guys.